Okay, okay. Let's get started. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica, and joining me today is Candy, an unemployment benefits expert at the Oregon Employment Department. Today, we will be talking to Candy about overpayments, the, may, the many reasons you may have been overpaid unemployment benefits, and what to do about it. After Candy's presentation, we will take as many of your questions as we can in the time we have left. If any of you would like to have this webinar simultaneously interpreted, please follow the instructions on the slide. It is being interpreted in Spanish, Russian, Vietnamese, and Cantonese. Click the interpretation box in the bottom Zoom bar, choose your preferred language, and then after choosing that language, the presenter's voice, aka my voice, will be lowered while the interpreter speaks over it. You can also choose to mute the presenter altogether if you want. Please remember that we cannot look into or resolve one person's own claim status in this public forum, and it is not safe to put your personal information in the chat box or question boxes in this public recorded webinar that will be posted online. Please post your questions in the Q&A box and not the chat box in the Zoom meeting, and we will take as many of them as we can after we finish our discussion with Candy. The Q&A box is located in the middle of the bottom bar of the Zoom window. If you have questions regarding federal benefit program rules, we ask that you please use the contact us form to ask your questions rather than calling. We are asking you to do this so we can keep our phone lines open for those needing help resolving issues with their claim. So now let's get started with our expert. Candy, first off, can you explain what an overpayment is? Absolutely. So an overpayment simply means that you were paid benefits that you were not eligible for. You will receive an overpayment if you were paid unemployment insurance benefits, and then later we discovered that you were not eligible for them. We do have a legal obligation to notify you of any overpayment you receive, and we are required to recover all overpayments. However, during the pandemic, we are using all available options to help you. We know how stressful it can be to owe money, and we know the overpayment may not be your fault. So be sure to take advantage of our new repayment options that we will explain later. Okay, Candy. Before we get into repayment options, can you tell us why someone maybe have been overpaid benefits? Yeah, there are multiple reasons why someone may have an overpayment of benefits. Some of the common causes are incorrectly reported earnings on a weekly claim. And this is not always an intentional error, but an overpayment is created nonetheless. Um, retirement pay was either not reported or reported incorrectly. And again, this is often not an intentional error. Your, repe your appeal could have been reversed and that means we found or you submitted additional information after your benefits were allowed. Now, this type of situation creates an overpayment because we originally allowed benefits based on the information we had. And because of the new information, it has now been determined that benefits should, not, should have been denied. Or it could be that a payment was made before we learned about an issue with your claim and Due to the high volume of claims created with the COVID pandemic, some claims were paid prior to the thorough investigation that all claims typically receive. You know, other, other possible reasons could be false information was provided or information was withheld in order to receive benefits that you were not eligible for. Uh, your benefit amount could have changed due to a correction on your base year wages or we could have made an administrative error on your claim. And lastly, there could have been a mistake made while, file, while filing your claim, and that can happen. We are all aware of that. Thank you for all those situations where people may get an overpayment. Now, can you tell us what to do if you receive a notice of, a, of overpayment? Of course. So the first notice you receive will be a decision stating the reason you were overpaid and the amount of the overpayment. At that point, you have 20 days to appeal the decision if you do not agree with it. The 20-day period starts counting from the date on the decision letter. 
you will receive a billing statement when an overpayment decision has become final and we determine that you have been overpaid benefits under the law. The billing statement will let you know that you must pay by a certain date or active collections will begin. And the statement might sound alarming, but it will give you options about how to respond to the notice of the debt. If you do want to pay the debt in full, you can simply follow the instructions on the statement to make a payment. And if you have questions or need to set up a payment plan, you can call 503-947-1710 and they will discuss your options with you. Thank you, Candy. Um, now, what if you aren't ready to pay the entire debt or if you don't think you should have to pay any of it back? If you did not cause the overpayment, you might be eligible for a waiver. And the US Department of Labor has given state agencies the authority to waive repayments of overpaid unemployment insurance benefits under certain conditions. During the pandemic, those conditions are rather straightforward. So you may be eligible for a waiver if the overpayment was not caused by you and it would be an unreasonable hardship for you to pay back. This means you may not have to pay back the overpaid benefits if we determine that the payment of these benefits was not your fault and repayment would be an unreasonable hardship for you. Now, as a reminder, if you received an overpayment of benefits from any of these federal pandemic emergency benefit programs, you may be eligible for a waiver. Those programs are Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation or PEUC, Federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation or FPUC, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, which is PUA, or Lost Wages Assistance, otherwise referred to LWA benefits. Thank you, Candy. Can you give us some examples of situations where you may not have to pay back the overpayment? Of course. Uh, some examples include the employment department made a mistake in processing your claim or the employment department put benefits on an incorrect claim. Those are both situations where the error was not the fault of the claimant. And there are some situations showing a hardship to pay it back. So for example, you did not cause the overpayment and repayment would mean you or your household has to go without basic necessities or you did not cause the overpayment and you have a health issue or disability would make repayment a hardship. So what can you tell us about the overpayment waiver? You must submit a waiver for overpayment if you cannot pay back the debt or wish to have the overpayment waived. And the best way to know your options and what you're eligible for would be to contact us at 503-947-1710. And this number goes straight to a revenue agent who can help with repayment options. Do not call our main phone lines because you may not get through. You can also learn more about your options by reading our overpayment FAQs at unemployment.oregon.gov. So how would someone get to the overpayment waiver, Candy? You can request a waiver by completing and submitting the waiver form that was included with your overpayment decision. If you don't receive a waiver in the mail, go to our website at unemployment.oregon.com, or I'm sorry, unemployment.oregon.gov and click on the overpayment waiver under our quick links under after applying. And I will go through that with you now. Okay, so here we are, unemployment.oregon.gov. And over here under our quick links, you're gonna go to after applying and you are going to click right here on this overpayment waiver. This is what will populate. Please ensure that you fill this out thoroughly. Anything that has an asterisk is a required field and make sure to explain any additional information that we could receive to understand why this would be a hardship for you. So as I mentioned earlier, the federal government allows us to waive overpayments as long as you did not cause the overpayment and it would be an unreasonable hardship for you to pay back the debt. 
Now, you must explain in the waiver form how paying the overpayment debt would be difficult for you and how you or your household would have to go without necessities if you were to pay it back. After you submit the waiver, we will decide if federal law allows you to not repay the overpayment, also known as waiving repayment. We will notify you by mail when we decide if we are allowed to waive your overpayment. And it is important that you keep your contact information up to date so you do not miss any notifications. Thank you, Candy. So what happens if someone receives their, ter their determination letter and they don't agree with our decision that they were overpaid? Well, if you don't agree with the department's decision, you can request a hearing for an appeal. You will, re you will receive a decision in the mail that will give you instructions to request a hearing. It's important to note that you must submit your appeal by the deadline noted in the decision. If you miss the appeal deadline, you will lose your right to appeal. It is also important that you wait for your decision before filing your appeal. We've had situations where someone was told over the phone how to file an appeal, and because they didn't wait for their decision to be issued, their appeal was void. Thank you, Candy. Can you explain the difference between requesting a waiver for overpayment and requesting a hearing for an appeal? Of course. If you don't agree with the decision that you were overpaid, you can file an appeal or request a hearing for an appeal using the contact us form at unemployment.oregon.gov. This means that you believe you were eligible for all benefits you received. Now, if you agree that you have an overpayment, but you were not at fault and paying it back would create a hardship, you can request an overpayment waiver. And again, as a reminder, you could request a waiver by completing and submitting the waiver form that was included with your overpayment decision letter. And as I said earlier, if you don't receive a waiver form in the mail, you can find it by going to our website. And that was the process that we walked through together earlier. Candy, now can you tell us about the new legislation that may change our rules about how we collect overpayments in the future? The Oregon legislature is considering legislation that would give us more flexibility and ease the impact of recovering overpayments. Right now, it's still too early to know whether or not the legislation will pass and eventually become law, and we are monitoring it and we'll share information if it does become law. Thank you, Candy, for giving us these updates. As a reminder, you can register for future webinars at unemployment.oregon.gov slash webinars. Our next webinar will be Thursday, April 29th at 1 p.m. and we'll share information about schools. Uh, that includes school workers and the reopening of schools and what that means for your benefits. As a reminder, you can sign up for our email updates at unemployment.oregon.gov. With our remaining time, we are now going to go into our Q&A box to answer some of your questions. Please remember that this is a public forum, so do not put any confidential information into the Q&A box. We know that there will be a lot of questions, and I want to let you know that we may not be able to give all the answers you want and need, but we will tell you everything that we know. Thank you for joining us. And now I'm going to go into the Q&A box and we can start our Q&A portion. All right, so Candy, our first question comes from Bitsy. How quickly will we, we be notified of an overpayment? Okay, so that really is situational and depends on what caused the overpayment and how much additional investigation it will require. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to read the question so that I can say it properly. <laughs> okay, so what if somebody filled out a waiver but they haven't heard back yet? 
That's a great question. So right now, please continue, fill out your waivers, do not be discouraged. We are currently working them in the order that they have been received. So it could be, we, we will get back to you. I can't give you a definitive time frame, but we will get back to you. All right. Uh, someone is asking if we can share any more de details on the upcoming organ, uh, the upcoming law that's in the legislature right now and how it would affect overpayments. Uh, the only reason that we can't really give a lot of details on it is because it can change still. It's still in that phase of like people are adding and taking away spots. So we don't want to go too much into detail because the minute we say one thing, it, it probably will change. <laughs> so once we get that final bill, and it's signed and, and put into law, then we will be able to give more definitive information on it. Um, if someone received an overpayment due to a misunderstanding of the rules during the pandemic, uh, so starting school or schools closing, et cetera, uh, will they be eligible for a waiver? So the best answer I have for that is to fill out the waiver let us review it and once we receive it if additional information is needed we will reach out to you so that that way we can determine the program whether it's governed by the cares act and all these different things they are always reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis okay Okay, so can you repeat the part about the appeals process and how some people have been instructed to do it, to do it over the phone? Something about waiting. Um, you do want to wait until your decision has been sent to you prior to filing for an appeal. It's very important that you receive your decision first. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've had some situations where people have been like told over the phone about the decision and then they and trying to just be proactive, uh, yes. filed an appeal. However, if if you wait, if you do that before you get your decision letter, then it makes your appeal request void. Um, so you, like Candy said, you want to wait. Um, how long does the department have to notify claimants of an overpayment? And is this something that could go on for years? No, it it will not take years, but it could take a few months to notify you. Is it the same department that will be reviewing the waivers that issued the overpayment? So, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, this is slightly a strange question. Um, so if you file an appeal and during that appeal you found, you are found to be overpaid, can you still file? Oh, I get it. Okay. So if you file an appeal and if the decision comes back that you were overpaid, can you still file for a waiver? Yes, you can still request a waiver. And remember on that waiver, you do need to explain if this is going to create a hardship for you in detail, as much detail as possible. Someone is asking, um, is it a problem when trying to reach claimants because they don't recognize the number? Um, that one is, if you want to answer, I, I would imagine yes, just because our, our phone number doesn't show up as OED. So Correct. We, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times we do run into that. People don't want to, to answer unknown questions phone numbers or something that does populate as unknown. So we, we do have some challenges in reaching claimants from time to time. Mm -hmm. Can you continue to file a weekly claim while waiting for the waiver to be processed? Yes, you can. All right. Um, 
And just to touch on that a little bit, if you haven't heard about your waiver after three weeks time, you can call us at 503-947-1995 to ensure that we have received it. Thank you. Oh, another claim I'm sorry. Um, hmm. This is a, I'm sorry, I'm trying to understand the question completely. Uh, it's just worded uh, differently. So basically, so if someone, if their claim expired, but then they, and they filed a new claim, would they need, uh, and then they, uh, sorry, See payments through March. Okay, so if they file a new, if their claim expired, but then they just continue to file as advised uh, and they continue to receive payments, would they need to repay those payments for the ones that they got after their, their claim expired? Um, I think that depends, I guess, on if they got moved back to their old claim. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Sarah, do you maybe want to weigh in on that? You might have more information than I do. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So um, this one is really hard to just answer um, without taking a look at the actual situation. So there are a lot of things that um, it may appear to be like the same situation for two people, but then they really end up going in different directions and have mm -hmm. different results. So without really taking a look at the claim in the actual situation, I, we wouldn't be able to really say for sure. Yeah. So I, it's possible if you receive double payments, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is likely that you would uh, be overpaid, but, but I can't confirm that one way or another. And just to clarify, you would get a notice if you were overpaid. Um, so if that does happen, like you'll be notified if it's not something Correct. that you're in the dark on. <laughs> Correct, you will be notified. Okay, would you just restate the phone number one more time, please? Absolutely, so the phone number to make, pay, make payment arrangements is 503-947-1710. And the number to check on a waiver is 503-947-1995. Okay. And just to remind people, um, during this webinar, we're not able to look to anyone's specific claims. So, um, Unfortunately, we're not able to answer any claim specific questions. All right. So they, uh, somebody was just notified of an overpayment and their new and their claim just ended. Do they need to resubmit another new claim? Oh, okay. So if they had an overpayment, but their claim just expired, should they still resubmit a new claim? Or like, I guess they're wondering if there will be like any, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Complications. Right. So again, this is something that we would need to take a look at the specific claim for. Um, everyone's situation is different. Okay. And just a little bit more on that one. We really wouldn't know why the benefits were ended. Mm -hmm. So we would have to look up their claim individually to ensure that we had all information necessary to provide them with a very good answer. Mm -hmm. All righty. And then would we reissue a 1099G if someone was overpaid? Sarah, do you want to take that one? 
Yeah, so we reissue 1099Gs if there were payments made in the same year, but maybe we didn't get the payment to apply appropriately um, before the, the first 1099G was processed. Okay, so if they paid it back, uh, dependent on when the payment <clears throat> processed. Right. Then the 10 okay. All right. And that could also be one that um, it could be a different answer depending on the actual claim situation. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just trying to see if there's any other um, broader questions that we can ask. All right. Uh... Okay, with that, I will say I will close out this webinar and thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Candy, for your help and we appreciate your time. Um, one more time, do you mind saying that phone number uh, where people can contact if they need to check on a waiver or need help with a, um, with a payment plan or anything like that? Absolutely. So. 503-947-1710. And this is the phone number you would call to make payment arrangements. And the phone number to check on a waiver request is 503-947-1995. Thank you very much. Uh, this webinar was recorded and will be put on our website and YouTube channel later, uh, either later today or early or, or early tomorrow morning. I'm having a hard time talking now. Uh, <laughs> thank you everyone for attending and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Candy and Sarah. Thank you. Thank you.